G'day YouTube, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stefan, AKA Hippo. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to motion track and replace a phone screen using Mocha for After Effects. Here we are within After Effects, your happy place. Um, today's tutorial is gonna be about replacing this phone screen, motion tracking it, replacing it with whatever you like. So there's a lot of cases that you might run into where a need like this will arise. So whether it's a promo for a new app, there will be cases where visual effects techniques will pop out of nowhere and you're like, oh shit, I need to know how to do that or I need to figure out how to do that. And that's where knowing stuff like motion tracking really comes in handy. Now there's a couple of ways to motion track with an After Effects. I'll just quickly run through that. If you click on just any layer and you come up here to animation, you can see that you can motion track by tracking the camera, uh, track in Boris FX Mocha, which is what we're gonna use, um, or track motion. So tracking motion will track using points. So it'll look for contrast on a picture and track on those points. Using Mocha, Mocha is a planar tracker, right? So it looks for planes. So similar to the point tracker, this one's looking for a large plane area. And again, looking for contrast within that picture to track motion. Tracking your camera is a 3D tracker. And you've seen a 3D tracker before, it scatters points throughout your whole scene and creates a 3D space and creates a 3D camera for you to then place items into a 3D scene. So what we're gonna use and what Mocha is known for is planar tracking essentially a cheat, a 2.5 dimensional cheat to get somewhere in between just a point tracker um, and a 3D tracker to do stuff like replacing the screen or replacing a billboard or replacing a television screen or a painting or adding tattoos or removing tattoos. Um, actually, one good example of uh, something I did for a client recently is I removed a tattoo off of a model. So they had a specific shot that they wanted um, close up of a bikini and there was a, um, a tattoo on the model's arm and they just wanted that shot without the tattoo on the model's arm. And I used Mocha to track the tattoo, Photoshop to then paint out the tattoo and then combine the two in After Effects, voila. So you see learning skills like this will come in handy in multiple ways. Hopefully it's uh, useful for you today. Now, when I first started using Mocha, it was a separate program. Now the basic version is included with After Effects. So track in Boris FX Mocha, it's part of After Effects. If you own After Effects, you own uh, Boris FX Mocha. So quickly, just to run through before we begin, here is our footage that we wanna replace the screen. You can see it's moving and a hand comes across the front as well. We're gonna take that footage into Mocha and show you how to track it, but also how to avoid movement in front of your object ruining the track. I'm then gonna show you how to do some basic green screen keying to remove the background of the phone. And then finally, uh, importing that tracking data and putting whatever you want to put onto your phone screen. Now, if you'd like to follow along, I've included the working file in the description below. So download that, I've included some footage and the whole project file for you. So hopefully that comes in handy. All right, so let's start fresh here in After Effects. I'm gonna take my master footage that I have here. Um, this is the clip of me moving my phone around with a tracking image. I've also included this tracking image as a download link in the description below if you need someone to put on your screen to track. So drag that footage down here to your little composition button and boom, there it is. So let's just play that. Looking good. So the first thing we're gonna do is jump straight into Mocha. So to do that, you click on the, the layer that you want to track, um, come up here to animation and go down to track in Boris FX Mocha. It'll then load up Mocha into your effect controls panel up here. And if you click on the Mocha logo, it'll open the program for you. There it is. I'll step you through it, it's quite straightforward. So first up, make sure you're on the Essentials workspace. And the first thing we wanna do is create some splines and identify which area we want the program to track. So using the X spline tool up here, Create X spline layer or Control L, you can come in here and draw around the shape that you want to track, okay? So these points here, I'm gonna draw around them I'm gonna come down to this X here in the middle. I'm gonna come down to the circle, come out, and this doesn't have to be perfect. Just roughly draw around the edges of the screen like that. And this is identifying for Mocha what you want it to track. Whenever you're drawing an X-spline layer, you right click to finish that shape. Now we're telling it that it needs to look at the contrast differences and the plane that I'm identifying here, and it tracks the movement on that plane. Now, if you come over here, there are some options telling Mocha what to track. 
If it's only tracking translation, so X and Y position, that's not gonna be exactly what we want because we're turning the phone, uh, we're rotating it, might be moving forward and, um, and backward, but we're actually gonna use all of our items. So all the way through to perspective and perspective is great. Um, it's designed for stuff like this where we are tracking a plane that moves in front of the camera. First thing to note, we drew that X spline. It has created a keyframe down the bottom here, this little green keyframe. We can, as the clip plays and tracks, we can stop and adjust and stop and adjust. That will animate where the X spline is, but it won't affect the tracking data. We're not gonna worry about that just yet. What we're gonna do is come down here to show surface and show grid. This is gonna help us identify the surface of the phone. So what I like to do is I like to go outside of the phone. So I'm just gonna line my, grab the little edges here and just pull them out and line them up with the edges of the phone. Make sure the blue hugs the outline of the phone. Um, it is a little bit finicky. So if you need to zoom in, just hold Z on the keyboard um, and zoom in like that and then hold X on the keyboard to use the hand tool. Um, if you press space bar, it'll actually play. So if you're used to pressing space for the hand tool, it's a bit different. So Z to click and drag, X to move around. So if we just look at this quickly, it looks like the plane is perfectly aligned there. So what we're gonna do, we've got with all those selected, I'm just gonna rename my layer and I'll call it the phone track layer. And let's track it. So come down here to your tracking tool and press track forward. Now it's looking pretty tight at the moment. You can see it's perfectly tracking that the grid is staying still and as we get further through the clip you'll notice just keep an eye on it make sure it doesn't move much it's looking pretty good the surface does shift a little bit there but overall it's pretty tight now you'll notice that my hand's going to come in in a second and it's probably going to ruin the track so let's see what happens okay see there it's shifted the track the track has changed you notice if you scrub through the timeline here, as soon as my hand comes in, you can see that grid shifting. You see that? The grid changes. So what we need to do is we need to tell Mocha to ignore my hand. So how do we do that? I'm gonna come here to my hand. I'm gonna come up here and add an X-spline layer. And I'm gonna draw just roughly around my hand and right click to finish that shape. So this has created a layer above my tracking layer. That's what you want. So right click that and go matte exclusion. So anything that's above a tracked layer that will generally exclude that information from the track that you are doing here. Okay, we're just then just gonna turn off this layer here so I can focus. Okay, so for this layer, I'm just gonna turn off surface and grid and I can see here that my finger has moved slightly. Make sure my finger is in. You see a new keyframe has developed there and I can drag the whole thing by clicking this box and move it over here. And we know that it is not affecting the track at this point. What we're actually gonna do is just clip that layer there. So click on your layer, come over here to layer properties, and we're gonna mark the endpoint, set layer endpoint to current frame. That way it disappears before that. And then we're gonna come through here. I'm just gonna double check. You see there my finger is poking through. So I'm just gonna move that up there, move that there. See there my finger is just, just ahead of the game there. Keep in mind, you obviously won't have to do this if you have don't have a hand coming in front of your um, in front of your element. Guys, I'm just going to go through, make sure again that my fingers never go above the line. Just kind of move the whole item with it there. Now at that point, my hand just sort of goes downwards a little bit. Okay, that should be enough, and we'll end the layer there. So come here to again to layer properties and and set layer out point to current frame. Okay, so now I'm going to turn my other tracking layer back on. Make sure the cogwheel is always on, otherwise it won't track. I'm gonna come back before my hand ruined it. Now on your matte exclusion layer, make sure, go to layer properties and link it to the phone track. So that means that item is now gonna be linked to the movement that we've already tracked on the phone and it won't track itself. So let's come to the beginning here where it started messing things up there. Go to essentials and track forward. Okay, you can see now it's ignoring my hand there. And let's just go through here and make sure we turn our surface and grid back on. Something happens right here. So what I might do is come up to my phone track and just strengthen that phone track a little bit here. Let's push it out to the edges. Just adding in the edge of that phone. Hopefully that'll help us avoid that issue there. 
I'm just going to track backwards from there. Now adjusting the surface doesn't necessarily doesn't change your tracking data, but it just changes the visual. Okay, so let's track forward from there. Okay, it's looking pretty safe now. Now one way to check that there aren't any major issues with your track is come up here to view and click on stabilize. Now this way, it, it stabilizes your footage and you can really see that it's sticking to it. That grid is stuck to it. Hand comes in, the grid doesn't move. That's what you want. I hope that was clear. The point is that we're using one layer, our phone track layer to track the movement, looking for nice clean edges. And then we're using another layer, linking it to that track, and then making sure that we exclude any movement to avoid it ruining the tracking information. Because like I said, Mocha is planar tracker. It's looking at the information on the screen of a plane. If there's something that comes across that plane, it might ruin the track. The other way to do this is to just shift the keyframes up or above um, to avoid any moving objects, but that might not always work for a bigger surface like this. That's it. All you have to do is press save the project here and then close Mocha. All of that information is saved in Mocha. If you press that save button, you can always just click Mocha, open it back up and all your information will be there again. So next step is layer new solid um, and name that phone contents. Just a black layer. Then press Control Shift C or Command Shift C to pre-compose, um, and just rename that phone contents again. Move all attributes into the new composition. Make sure that's checked. Okay. Click back on my phone screen footage. Come to mock up. Come to the tracking data. Create tracking data. We're going to create it using the phone track, not the mat exclusion. Press OK. That has now brought that tracking information in. We're going to then export corner pin supporting motion blur. And the layer to export to is our phone contents layer. I'm going to apply that export. And now you can see that that black solid is perfectly tracked to the object. Now, obviously that's not exactly what we want. We want this to appear within our phone. So let's go ahead and key our uh, master footage. So bring your phone contents layer below your master footage, right click your master footage, come to effect, keying, key light. Take your color pick here and press anywhere on the green phone. You can see it's already done a pretty good job, but what you want to do, come here to view, change that to screen mat, then come down to screen mat options here and open that up. And then you want to clip the black till it's completely black. And then you want to clip the white backwards until it's completely white. And then make sure that you scroll through. You see that angle there, the X reappears. So let's go Let's go to where it reappears and we're going to clip the black even further. Scrub all the way through. Looking pretty good. So I also like adding a little bit of screen softness, so maybe like a three and then maybe just a bit of a screen pre blur. Let's add a one there, but not too much. So when you're filming your footage, watch out. There's too many reflections or there's too, too big of a color difference on the screen. Um, you might have issues. Keep that image real nice and clean. So once you've done that, come up here to screen map, change it to final result. So there it has been screened. I'm gonna go to my phone contents and I'm just gonna click on my solid, I'm gonna go layer, solid settings, change it from black to pink. And you can see that that is now perfectly within the phone with none of those overhanging edges. My fingers, you can see, go over it slightly there. And if we just go forward here to when I actually swipe over it, you can also see that it's been keyed out there as well. One more thing that I like doing is experimenting with my replace method under the screen mat option in key light. I prefer hard color sometimes. Sometimes it preserves the original color of the footage slightly better. Now I'm going to open up my phone contents pre-composition. Now how corner pitting works is it takes a layer. So this pre-composition that is the size of the comp. Uh, so in this case, uh, 3840 by 2160, then it squashes that into the shape that you wanted, right? So if I write something on this, let's just say I write test, test, scale it up a little bit, um, and then just bring it to the middle. If I then go back to my phone master footage, you'll see that it is squashed. It's not a representation of what you've actually put in here. So like I said, corner printing squashes this full size layer into the shape that you wanted. So how do we fix that? Well, what I like doing is coming to my master master footage composition here, coming up here 
to the composition uh, tab and clicking the lock button. What that does is it locks that view, right? We don't, we're not gonna swap views when we swap compositions down here. It actually sticks to that view. That way we can go into our phone contents comp, press S for scale on that layer, uncheck the constrained proportions so we can adjust X and Y scale separately. And you can see here, if I then adjust here, it applies and shows within my comp here. So that way you can come in here and adjust things and actually see what it's gonna look like. So the font looks pretty good at that scale. So I'm gonna unlock it bring it in here and I'm just going to move it around slightly. So now the font looks good. Um, using that trick, locking that composition tab and then going in and adjusting, adjusting the settings slightly, super handy in cases like this. I'm just gonna go back into the phone contents there, delete that layer and I'm gonna bring in my little battlefield learning animation that I did in my previous tutorial. Link up here if you wanna check that out. It's a pretty nifty little learning animation. So we're gonna pop that into the phone as well. I'm just gonna lengthen it slightly. So this composition is how long? Five seconds and 22. So I'm gonna right click that, go time, time stretch, five seconds and 23 frames. That way it goes across the whole thing. I'm gonna change the transfer mode from normal to screen. Screen gets rid of anything black um, on that layer and then just keeps the brighter values that's on that layer. And then on my phone contents background, I'm gonna come here, right click, effect, generate, four color gradient and I'm just going to use the standard rainbow one that's come in there. So let's go back to our master footage and we can see that the loading animation like like the text before was squashed. So let's just lock that composition window again, come down to our phone contents here, press S for scale on our loading animation, uncheck constrained proportions and I'm just going to push my scale out to about 340. Then I'm gonna reconstrain those and now they can scale together like that. Now if we press play, perfectly tracked to the phone and we've got that loading animation in there as well. Now we'll just repeat that process with a little bit of text. So unlock that um, composition view. Now we're back in here and I'm just gonna go content loading dot 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 center the anchor point by using reposition anchor point uh, link in the description below to that plugin or if you press y on your keyboard to get the pan behind tool up here actually move that anchor point if you press control you can find the middle point it snaps to the middle point all right so that scale i'm just going to bring that in and let's have a look at the scale down here so it's so i'm just going to scale that down i'm going to scale this up to 170 to mimic what we did with the loading animation and i'm just going to reconstrain those scale that back down, come back to my master footage and boom. So it might take a little bit of playing around, but you will find the correct scale for your content in the shape of the phone. Now the last little touch is to turn on motion blur. So the first thing I want you to make sure of is go to composition, composition settings, advanced, and make sure your shutter angle is 180 and your samples per frame is just eight or 16. What that's gonna do is that's gonna mimic your standard shutter speed. So when you turn on motion blur here on your phone contents, it'll just meld it in slightly better and add a little bit of motion blur to the movement as you move your phone. So just a quick recap, I taught you how to track your phone screen within Mocha for After Effects. I taught you how to exclude if your hand, for example, comes over that screen. I quickly covered how to use key light to key out the green. Then we looked at importing that tracking data into After Effects as quarter pin supporting motion blur, applied it to a pre-composition, which is the same size as your composition. We then looked at the scaling issue and making sure that your items don't look too stretched once they're back into your phone. And then we added motion blur to get the final result. I really hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. I love Mocha for After Effects. It's where I started my uh, YouTube channel 10 years ago. I started it because I learned Mocha. Um, so I will be doing plenty more on this. If you haven't seen my VFX breakdown, make sure you check it out in the description below. It uses some tracking techniques from Mucka. And like I said, don't forget the project files are just linked below if you want to follow along and create something just like this. Also, don't come at me if you think it's Mocha. It probably is pronounced Mocha. I say Mocha. You can say Mocha. We can all live happily ever after. <laughs>
Thanks for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to see more tutorials like this. Be sure to check out some of my previous tutorials, uh, like my top three plugins for After Effects, as well as how to create this cool loading animation within After Effects.